scripture that I'm reading to you today is found in Psalms 23. We, last Sunday night, we began looking at Psalms 23 a little bit with, The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. And in that we recognize that there's a lot of ways that we can say a lot of the things that we do. We can make a, a, a speech saying, the Lord is my shepherd, or the Lord, and speaking about who he is to us, and is, as opposed to could be or would be, uh, my, as opposed to being someone else's shepherd, uh, one who looks after us and takes care of us. And uh, so there's a lot that we think about in uh, that particular direction. The words that I want to read to you today are found in the second and third verse, so where he says, He maketh me to lie down in green pastures. He leadeth me beside the still waters. He restoreth my soul. He leadeth me in the paths of righteousness for his namesake. Over the years, I've been able to collect a number of different uh, ways that people have taken the 23rd Psalm and have, and have written it based on what their life is and what uh, there are a lot of things that have to do with their life. And uh, uh, one of the things that uh, one person wrote years ago, we don't really know who it is because it's, uh, the author is unknown, but it's an Indian 23rd Psalm and it starts out like this. It says, The great father above is a shepherd chief I am his, and with him I want not. He throws out to me a rope, and the name of the rope is love, and he draws me to where the grass is green and the water not dangerous, and I eat and I'm satisfied. Sometimes my heart is very weak and falls down, but he lifts me up again and draws me into a good road. His name is wonderful. Sometime, and it may be very soon, it may be very long, long in time, he will draw me into a valley. It is dark there, but I be afraid not. For it is in between those mountains that the shepherd creator will meet me and the hunger that I have in my heart all through this life will be satisfied. He gives me a staff to lean upon. He spreads a table before me with all kinds of food. He puts his hand upon my head and all the tired is gone. My cup he fills till it runs over. What I tell is true, I lie not. These roads that are away ahead will stay with me through life and after and afterwards I will go to live in the big teepee and sit down with the shepherd chief forever. So be it. That's kind of a beautiful version of what it is. You know, different things that people have said. One person said, and I'm not going to go all the way through this, but just a little bit of it. The Lord is my boss and I shall not go on. He gives me peace when chaos is all around me. Another one says, uh, Psalm for teachers, the Lord is my teacher. I shall not lose the way to wisdom. He leads me in the lowly path of learning. He prepares a lesson for me every day. Then a psalm for busy people. The Lord is my pace setter. I shall not rush. He makes me stop and rest for quiet intervals. And, uh, different things that different ones have said that refer uh, to the 23rd Psalm in one way or another. A lot of songs have been written based on the 23rd Psalm. 23rd Psalm, of course, itself is a song. And as a song, it, it certainly was one that was sung by the congregation of Israel. It was one that they, uh, that uh, was considered as uh, when David was king. And, and uh, I don't know exactly when he wrote it. Nobody does. Uh, somebody said he wrote it when he was king. Somebody else said he must have wrote that while he was out in the field somewhere, while he was watching the sheep and understanding and things like that. Uh, were a part of what it was uh, that he was doing. Uh, back in 2012, I wrote it this way. My Lord, like a shepherd, will lead me and pass to still waters I'll go. There's nothing I need I will want for. The green pastures of his love, I'll know. I am restored by my Savior. Of his righteousness, my soul will sing. He is with me wherever I'm facing. To his rod and his staff I will cling. The en my enemy to me is no danger when God's Spirit is showing the way. The blessings just keep overflowing. I have light in the shadow of day. 
His love and His mercy will follow with His goodness my whole life through. In His house I will live forever when my old life gives way to the new. So we, you know, obviously uh, there have been uh, bunches of people that in one way or another have been, uh, have been inspired by these words that we find in the 23rd Psalm. They are words that uh, that tend to uh, to impact a life in such a way that it is the most memorized verses of Scripture other than John 3.16 that there is in on record. Uh, it is certainly the first chapter, as we spoke about last week, that anyone, uh, that almost anyone who has ever memorized Scripture has memorized. They memorized that uh, particular one. It is a psalm that tends to reach all peoples, somebody said, that wherever they live and whatever their circumstances are and whatever is going on in their life, it, it, if they read it, it impacts them and it touches them and it makes a difference to them. It is, uh, it is, it is a beautiful, uh, 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 they are beautiful words that certainly uh, do in every kind of way impact our life. David's faith as a young boy, as a shepherd on the hillside, as, as one watching the sheep, as one who had to care for them in the midst of a dangerous situation, in the midst of uh, circumstances that was very difficult. You know, when we, when we look at Palestine and we look at where it is and all the things that are a part of that, Palestine is a is an interesting place. It has hills and it has valleys. It, you know, when God was bringing them into the land, He spoke to them about that. He said He spoke to them about where they had been and in the wilderness they had came through and from Egypt where uh, they had uh, they had been enslaved and all of those things. But when He came to that river and He told them about the land that they were about to go into, He said, "It's a it's a place filled with mountains and valleys and it has springs of water that spring forth and it has." This and it has that, and speaking about all the things uh, that were that were there. David lived in that land, and he lived in a place that wasn't too far from Jerusalem. He lived in uh, uh, he lived in a place that was uh, uh, that was in all uh, intents and purposes a place where sheep were uh, were the main uh, way of making a living. He would, he lived in a place that was close enough to Jerusalem that in that uh, they. The sacrifices that were going on constantly, people needed the sheep. And when they came to Jerusalem, they needed to come through a way to where they were able to obtain them and able to get them. And, that, and for all the sacrifices that were being made. And so he understood those things. And he had a, a very practical faith in God. A, very, uh, a great faith that reached out to where he was. And knowing that God was with him in the midst of the most difficult situations. And... Of course, we read about things that David uh, went through while he was out there on that in, on those hillsides. We read about him facing a bear. We read about him facing a lion. We read about him taking a hold of it by the beard and 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 killing. We uh, we we read about the manner in which God used him even out there on that side and made him to understand his dependence upon Him and to see that. While he cared for the sheep, there was somebody that was caring for him. There was somebody that was watching over him. There was somebody that was putting him in the place where he needed to be as well. And in all of those things, uh, we see it as, he read, as we read and as we look at the words that are found in this beautiful chapter in the Bible. This thing that every one of us recognize so very well. And we know. And he does that. He had a a practical faith, knowing that God was there to make him able to overcome whatever situation and whatever circumstance he was in. I remember years ago, my brother, uh, as, as we talked about his time, that he, he spent uh, a year over in Vietnam uh, back, uh, back when he was young. It was a difficult time for every one of us with him over there, especially uh, in the course of events where we uh, we saw people that we loved and cared about not come home, and uh, uh, you know those that uh, uh, that uh, we we were involved with funerals for, and one thing or another, and and uh, it was a difficult time as we look at that. But he told me about uh, 
told about a couple of things that was over there. Uh, one of them he's never really elaborated enough on for me to really know too much about because it was a time when he was in danger and certainly needed the protection of the Lord. And the Lord did protect him and brought him home. And, he's, and he is a minister of God, preaching and, and teaching and, and talking about God uh, in the area where he lives uh, at this point in time. And, uh, but, uh, but he said that while he was over there, there was one point in time where they gave him a little bit of leave. He had, a, he had something called R&R. &R. You know, he, uh, he uh, they, they, they shipped him over to Japan, which wasn't all that far away. And he, he went through his R&R &R in Japan. I, uh, I, as as, uh, as kind of neat. But when we look at this thing and we recognize this, is, somebody said, well, this scripture as it speaks in these particular verses that I've read to you today, is a picture of God's R&R &R for His people. You know, what they, and what those things mean. You know, God's, uh, the first thing they mean has something to do uh, with rest. He says, he says to us here, He maketh me to lie down in green pastures. I, I was reading about a, a pastor out in Texas, and, and uh, the pastor... Uh, went in, he was, uh, his, 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 one of, his arm had gotten numb and he was feeling some pain and he went in to see his doctor and his doctor said, well, you had not had it yet, but you're, go you're, gonna, you're about to have a heart attack. And he said, what you're going to have to do is you're going to have to stop what you're doing and he gave him a certain amount of time. And the, uh, the pastor out there said, well, there is no way I can do that. I got this plan and I got this plan and I got this and I got... This scheduled, and I I've got to be in this location, and all these. He said, "No, you're not." He said, "He said, uh, said I'm gonna said said I'm gonna admit you to the hospital. You're gonna stay right there, and you're gonna lay still." And and uh, he said he was uh, grumbling about it and all those things. And uh, one of his deacons from the church came in where he was at, and and he said uh, and he and he said. And he told, started grumbling to him about having to be there and not being able to do what he wanted to do. And, and uh, the deacon said, Now look, Pastor, said, God put you in this bed, not that doctor. He, okay, he said, he said and, and in it, he said, I suddenly understood what it says when it says, He maketh me to lie down. He takes me to a place where He puts me in a situation that He wants me to be in, so I take the rest that He wants to give me. Now, of course, when we talk about rest in, in the gospel message, we're talking about resting in Jesus. We're talking about resting in His work and not ours. We're talking about realizing that in Him and Him alone are we able to find the rest that we need and the help that we need and all of that. But it, uh, such an interesting thing as he said, there are times when maybe God places you on your back so in order that you do rest, that you have to. I, uh, years ago, the very first thing I ever had published anywhere, I had published in a in a gospel magazine, and 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 I, at one of my I wasn't going to do that, but uh, I was teaching Sunday school at the time. I was about 19 years old, and one of my students in my Sunday school class said we was out riding around through the neighborhood in the afternoon, me and about three or four of my students. They they were uh, they uh, we were just taking a little ride on Sunday afternoon, you know, one of those Sunday drives, and he said and he said. Uh, said, well, Wayne, he said, why don't you send that in? Get somebody to publish it. And he got me to think about it, so I sent it in, and they did. And uh, But in it, uh, I, I made the statement about, you know, there are times, uh, you, know, you, you know, when we, uh, when we almost wish we, uh, whatever, might be able to have a break, because we need one. And there are things that we do in that situation, in that circumstance that, but that God sometimes puts us in that situation in the manner that He desires and wants to do. He makes me lie down in green pastures. Boy, those green pastures are important. You know, we when we're talking about, you know, you leave the the, the, the sheep goes through and they, they feed on whatever it is that they do, but they but when the time comes uh, when it's when they're finished feeding and and the Shepherd brings them to a particular place. He brings them to a place where they can find rest, where they can lay down, where they, you know, I, you know, I, I remember uh, years ago when I was uh, working at the, at the dairy that when I come in at 3 o'clock in the morning to get the dairy, the dairy herd up and bring them in to milk them, you know, uh, that, because that's about what time I got there. And, 
They was all laying around on the grass. They was, they was laying there resting. They, were, they didn't like me getting them up <laughs> the way I did. But, uh, but uh, you know, the shepherd takes them to a place where they can find that rest. They, they can find the rest and relaxation, I think, is what R&R &R generally tends uh, to mean. But I think there's more to it when we go through this particular thing uh, than, just, uh, than just that as we talk about as we talk about that, he says, he says here in this, he leadeth me beside still waters. Now, you know, through the years, you, you know, because the Bible talks so much about sheep, and it goes into detail about them over and over again, and it speaks about you know, the needs that they have and the circumstances they are and the inability to defend themselves and all kinds of things that are a part of that. Uh, I read where if the water is running real fast, that sheep have problems being able to drink out of it, that they won't go up to the water, that they're afraid of it. But uh, the still waters, that, you know, have you ever went out when you're fishing or doing whatever and, and you, you sit down beside the bank and the water is just so smooth and it's, and it's quiet and it's, and I, I don't know if you've ever sat there and watched as the sun came up over water or anything like that, and that just to, uh, and the beauty of it, the pictures maybe that you've seen that have been painted or whatever, uh, the still waters, he, he speaks about uh, bringing them to a place of safety where they're able to drink calmly, and, and, and in that he speaks about refreshing, you know, that, that's refreshment. Uh, somebody said the R&R &R, uh, for God's children in this verse meant rest and refreshment, that, that we get uh, what we need for food in the sense of talking about God's Word being there for us to, uh, to, uh, to give us the nourishment that we need, to give us the help that we need, and the refreshment, the very water, uh, that, uh, uh, speaking about it in that kind of way, talking about it, uh, in, in that kind of way, and, and uh, it's, uh, it's kind of an interesting uh, thing uh, to think about. He restoreth my soul. Now, you know, somebody, I can't remember his name, he was a pastor, of, uh, uh, pastor up, up in Louisville uh, when, I was, uh, when I was pastoring at, at 18 Mile up there close to Louisville myself. He was a... Uh, he was pastor of that great big church downtown, Walnut Street Baptist. He worked at the seminary and he pastored there. And, and uh, he came to this particular verse and he said, he said David was, was old when he was writing this and he was looking back and remembering all the times that uh, the things had not been exactly the way they should have been in his life and the things that had gone wrong in one thing or another and the restoration that he gave him. Maybe that's true. I, I don't know. I don't know when he wrote this song. But I do know that there is one thing for sure, that in the midst of our greatest defeats, in the midst of our greatest, uh, t the times when things were, uh, when we've fallen head over into, just fallen flat on our face or whatever, uh, that when we come to God, when we speak to Him, when we lift up our voice toward Him, He restores and He and he brings us to a place of understanding that he loves us and he cares about us and that we are still part of his family, that he hasn't thrown us away, that we, we're we not part of the garbage that's been cast out. He is, uh, that he restores us to that position in his family, like he did the prodigal son when he talked about how he, that when that situation, as Jesus spoke about that in the, in the 15th chapter of the book of Luke and how that, how that he, uh, that when he came back home and trying to say, I've sinned against you, the father wouldn't even give him time to talk about it hardly. He just, he, he said, bring the robe and put it on him and put a ring on his finger and kill the fatty calf and let's rejoice because my son who was lost is found. My son who was dead is alive. And, that, and all of those things we recognize in him. He comes to restore us and, and, to, uh, and to give us the life that we need. And then it says to us in this verse, He leadeth me in paths of righteousness. You know, there's one very significant thing about sheep. Today we, 
we, we put them in pens, we put them in, in fields that have electric fences all the way around it and different wires that are up on it and everything like that because a uh, little old sheep can't go through without hitting that thing and getting himself, make him realize that he, he, he's not getting out of there, you know. But it also keeps the danger out. It keeps the dogs out and, and, and the coyotes and whatever might be after uh, a, a little old sheep and might be wanting for a good meal like that and whatever. It, it, it does that. Uh, but, uh, but in this, it says, He leadeth me. Uh, we, we tend to do things like, you know, when I, when I was working with cattle, I got in my big old four-wheel drive truck and my, and my brother-in-law got in his and my nephew got in his and everybody else that worked on the farm got in theirs and we got in behind them and we just shoved them where we wanted them to go. We got, you know, if we had a sick calf, one of us would get on one side and, and, and make sure the fence was on the other side and the other right up in behind it and, and, and keep that calf from moving anywhere except straight up to the barn. You know, we done those kinds of things. But the way they did sheep over there, it was totally different. There was a uh, there was a church that's having a, a program, and uh, uh, it had sheep in it. And one of them brought a little lamb, had a little lamb, and and the little boy that was playing the shepherd, they brought that lamb to his house and had him take care of the sheep all week long. And then when they came to the church and he went in, he walked up the aisle, and that little sheep. That little lamb went walking up behind him, bleeding all the way up, staying real close to that little boy because he cared for the sheep all week. That sheep followed him as a leader. In those days and times, the shepherd didn't, didn't push the sheep. The shepherd led the sheep. The sheep followed him to the pasture. The sheep followed him where it was they went. The sheep, uh, sheep weren't pushed. They were, they were led. And... You know, that's what it speaks about, about God that does with us. He leads us where we need to go. He leads us in the paths of righteousness. He leads us in teaching us and showing us and making us understand and know uh, what it is that we need to know. How thankful we are that God leads us in that kind of way. It says... He leadeth me in the paths of righteousness for his name's sake. He leads me because that's who he is. That's what he does. He cares about me. He guides me. His hand will guide me in whatever it is that takes place and happens. Whatever it is that I do. And I can trust him to guide. I can trust him to show the way. I can trust him to make me be and do what it is that he wants me to do. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He maketh me to lie down in green pastures to get the nourishment I need, leading me beside the still waters to get the refreshment that is necessary. He restores me. He restores my soul. He leadeth me in the paths of righteousness. He leads me the right way. He shows me where I need to go and how I need to go. He is my Savior, my Lord, and my Shepherd. I hope that He's yours. If He's not, He can be today. Father, in the name of Jesus, we come to you once again. Lord, we thank you for these words again. We recognize, Lord, how significant they are in our life and how they've touched us through the years and we know that they've touched so many more in so many places in so many different languages and all of those things Lord we thank you for these words that you put in the heart and the mind of a man that sat down and wrote them down under the very inspiration of your spirit we thank you for him and we thank you for the Spirit of God that touches and guides and moves in our life, teaching us, uh, even as your word tells us it, that he does in Jesus' name.